Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from controlpaint.com, and today we're going to talk about another tool pair that just works really well together. And to show it first as a quick example, here we have a ball, which is on its own layer, and the shadow is part of the background. So if I want to paint on top of this ball, I could make a new layer, set it to be a clipping mask, and then when I paint, it only goes on top of the ball. And so I could erase away if I want because it's on its own layer. I could even move it around but it's going to be limited to the shape of that ball. And then when I'm done with sort of adding the paint that I want, I might merge that down. Now that it's merged down, I have a single layer that was very easy to control and to add that shadow onto. And this is something I do all the time. So the tool pair goes as follows. New layer, clipping mask, and merge down. And the way I actually set this up oftentimes is I'll make them actions. So I'll have, we'll say, F2 as an action to make a new layer. But as you've seen with the ball here, what I'm doing all the time is making a new layer, immediately setting it to be a clipping mask, and then I'm going to paint some extra detail. So maybe I want to paint this sort of shadow here as it approaches this base. And then I'll use the eraser and kind of get rid of what I don't want. And then I'll merge it down. So I have a couple scenarios. The first scenario is I just make a new layer. That's something we've done tons of. But the other scenario is make a new layer and immediately turn it into a clipping mask. So I actually make a second action for that scenario, which is make a new layer, turn that layer into a clipping mask. It's a very short action. But since it's sort of conceptually similar to my F2 make a new layer button, why not just make it shift F2? So I could just hit F2 to make a new layer, or I could hold down Shift while doing it, and then I have a new layer that's a clipping mask. So once again, I make a new layer, which is immediately turned into a clipping mask. Maybe this time I'll add a little detailing to the ball. So I want some, I don't know, some sort of panel borders or lines, things like that. Now, I don't always immediately want to merge it down. Because with clipping mask, you can actually use layer order to your advantage. So maybe I say I want to have some color underneath these panel lines. Well, in that case, I'd want to select the ball layer and then just make a normal new layer. And in doing so, it automatically puts it underneath. So if I wanted to put a little color on here, you see it would go below those lines. But it's also a clipping mask, so it won't go outside of the borders. But then when I'm done with that, I could merge it down and merge it down. So the final aspect of the tool pair is merge down. You might use the default keyboard shortcut, which is control E. You could also bind it to be an action. So you could have it right next to your F2. You could say, I have a single step action called merge down, and I'm going to set that to F3. So in this proposed scenario, you have F2 makes a new layer, shift F2 makes a new clipping mask layer, and then F3 merges back down into the stack. And here's a quick practical example of what that looks like in practice. Here I have a single layer that is the sword silhouette, and then this background layer is just sort of my example that I'm going for. So I'm going to be making a lot of new layers, which are immediately turned into clipping masks, that just allow me to paint big detail on there quick, just kind of laying in colors, being able to erase away what I don't want, because remember, they are temp layers. They just happen to also be clipping masks. And then when I'm happy with them, I just merge them down. So this is a process that I use all the time. When I just have a shape in place and I want to start laying in color on top of it or details or textures, any sort of inside the lines type of work, this is such an easy thing to do. So really getting used to the sort of muscle memory of this is extremely valuable. Now, whether or not you bind them to F2 and F3 or even make them actions in the first place, well, that's up to you. But I think this tool pair works really well together. And once again, this is something I use so much that I actually decided to dedicate a video in the store to it. It's called Dynamic Brushwork. And it talks about using this for full illustrations and talks about a bunch of different specific ways that you can really get the most out of it. But until then, enjoy this new tool pair. Give it a try. And if you have anything else to add, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.